Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 69. And if you want to download the Sorcorp Business 210 Chapter 7, click on the link below the video. In this video, we get to compare a sample mean to the sampling distribution of sample means or sampling distribution of X bar. We're on the sheet EX1. We have three examples in this video. Now, here's our example. An insurance company claims that the average cost per year for a policy is 824 bucks. We know that the standard deviation for the population is 195. Our question, first question is what is the probability of getting a sample mean within 20 bucks? Meaning we're going to have a range and we want to know the probability between some lower and upper. What's the probability that if we would go out and take a sample it would lie within this range? And then second we'll ask if you take a random sample and get a sample mean of 850 bucks is the claim reasonable, right? So this is a way of testing. Here's a claim from an insurance company. And we want to go out and take a sample, compare it to our sampling distribution of X bar, and see if it's reasonable or not. Now I'm going to pull this out of the way. A picture sometimes tells a thousand words. So we have mu. And we saw last video that if we know mu from the population, we know that that'll be the mu sub x bar or our expected x bar. So this this is a plot of x bars here. And right in the middle will be the population mean, meaning the 824. And that'll also be the exact mean when we plot all of our uh, x bars, which of course we're not going to do this time. We just did that last time to prove that we can do this. All right, so that, we're given this from the insurance company, so now we know mean of our sampling distribution. We know sigma. This chapter, chapter 7, we'll know it next chapter. We won't. We'll see what to do when we don't. And we have what's called a margin of error. We want to calculate probability getting the sample mean within 20 bucks of this 824. So that's called the margin of error. That means on either side of our mu, below and above, we need some error. That's the 20 bucks. All right, our sample size is going to be 300. We know that uh, 25,000 um, policies for this insurance company has have been issued. So we'll do, we have to calculate our standard error, right? We're, for this distribution, we have the mu, but we have to calculate our standard error, which is going to be much smaller than our given sigma. Here's our calculation. We know we have a correction factor. We don't have to use this correction factor if when we calculate little sample size divided by uh, finite population size uh, is less than 5%. We don't have to use it. So let's go ahead and equals little n divided by big N. All right, 1.2%. So it's less than 0.5, so we don't need to use this little correction. We'll just use this. And the textbook basically assumes this for all the problems except for one or two where it tells you you have to use it. All right, so we're going to take our population standard deviation divided by square root of our n. And that better be a lot smaller and it's going to be our standard deviation for the distribution of sample means. $11.26. Now with this um, we'll use that down in our calculation but to calculate the low and high x we've got to use our margin of error. So I'm going to say uh, 824 bucks minus that 20 Right, and this you could pick any value you want. Next chapter we'll see how to use the standard deviation to determine the margin error you want. But here we're just saying within 20 bucks. So we have a lower and then an upper. Now we can calculate the probability that our sample will be between these two values. Now check this out. This is chapter 7 x bars. Last chapter we did x's. The functions are still the same. So we get to use equals norm, either dist or s dist. Um, I'm going to use this one because we have our x is x bar values. Now the function, Excel functions, always puts an x because uh, for whatever reason. But we know that we can use the same distribution regardless if it's an x like last chapter or an x bar. So in this chapter, we're going to say always the bigger x bar for us. And we know the mean, oh yeah, that's the population mean, is equal to 
uh, mu sub x bar. And standard deviation, it's definitely not up in the population. It is our calculated standard error. And then we do 1 for cumulative. Now remember, it goes from the low end up to the high end. Actually, let me enter this and do our picture. That, um, that 0.96 came from negative uh, infinity all the way up to the high one. Now we do a second uh, norm.dist to calculate the probability here, and we subtract the two. Our x is the small one, not x. It's x bar. That's just the screen tip. Comma, the mean, the standard deviation. That's our standard error. Comma, and then 1. And so 92 cents. Now let's do con, um, control shift tilde, which is general, or you can go up to um, this drop down and select general. So the probability that we could get a sample between 804 and 844 bucks, that's represented by that area there, is 0.92. Right? That's basically how most of the homework problems uh, are asked in chapter 7. But really, we'll see later that the real use of this is then to go out and take a sample. Right? We know uh, the probability here. So what happens? If you take a random sample and get a sample mean of 850 bucks, is the claim reasonable? Well, look at this. 804 to 844 were 92, 92% sure that it will lie between this. So that means there's you know approximately 4% here and 4% here. That's a very, so this would be on the upper end, right? 4% up here. There's a 4% chance that our sample mean would be up here. So if we go out and get a sample of 850 bucks, it doesn't seem reasonable, right? So maybe this claim is not reasonable. All right, so we calculated within a margin of error these two values. There's the probability that our sample mean will lie between those two values. Let's do a second example. All right, and we have a, a no, no picture yet. We'll do the picture in just a moment. Average gas price in Washington is reported. The population mean $2.57. Now, um, I guess this is 2012. I'm shooting this. That is not the mean price in Washington. Uh, nevertheless, it'll, it'll illustrate our, it's much higher now. But this will illustrate our uh, methods. All right, we'll assume sigma to mean that's population, standard deviation, 22 cents. Uh, we have a sample size of 50, and we want the margin of error or the distance on either side of mu to be 5 cents. And our question is, what is the probability that the mean price for a sample of 50 stations is within 5% of our population? All right, let's calculate our standard error. Equals, and it better be a lot smaller than that. OK, so our sigma, standard deviation from the population, divided by square root of our n. And in this case, we're assuming uh, the, the n would be gigantic, right? Um, all the gas prices in Washington, and the sample size is small. So if we did our calculation like we did last video, n divided by big N, it would be much smaller than uh, 5%. All right, and the book, again, assumes almost all the problems are like this. So there's our standard error, standard deviation for our distribution of sample means, 3.1 cents. Now we can calculate from our margin of error, a low x bar. So we're going to subtract 5 pennies and then add 5 pennies. Remember, we're dealing with a distribution that's all averages. So that's why, you know, it seems like 5%, 5 cent on either side of this would make, it would make no sense for the population. But for our distribution of x bars, it's fine. Right? And you could see, if this is a standard error, that means standard deviation is 3 cents, and this is 5 cents. This is almost two standard deviations on either side. All right, now we can calculate, prob calculate the probability between these two values equals norm not x. I mean, that's the screen tip, but we know we can use the x bars. x bar is our random variable in chapter 7. Last chapter, the random variable was x, comma, mean. Comma standard deviation. Don't forget to always use the standard error. Comma one minus the next one. 
always the bigger one for the first one, and now the smaller x bar. And then our mean, our standard error, comma 1. And so there's a picture. So it's about, I'm going to get rid of that formatting, number format. It's about 90%, almost, or 89. So um, the probability that we could get, um, what are the two values? 252 and 262. Uh, the probability we get go out and get a sample and get a value between 252 and 262 is about 90.9, right? The probability that would be outside that range is 0.1. A couple ways we could say this: the probability of selecting a sample of 50 gas stations and finding a sample mean within five cents of the population mean is 0.89. Now the way a random sample of 50 station has a probability of 0.89 prob ha sorry a random sample of 50 stations has a 0.89 probability of providing a sample mean that is within 5 cents of the population mean. Finally of course the the outside the range there is a 10 about 10 or 11% probability that the sample will not be in our interval. Again in our first example, we saw if we go out and do our sample and we find something way out here, it's like, forget it. Then the original claim does not seem reasonable. All right, third example, let's go over here. Uh, history for our food manufacturer shows that the weight for sugar covered, uh, chocolate covered sugar bombs, a popular breakfast cereal, is the population mean is 14 ounces population standard deviation is 0.4 ounces. Now if the morning whoops, the morning shift sample shows we go out and take a sample, x bar equals 14.4 ounces and our sample size was 30. The question is, is this sampling error reasonable? Remember because the sample's different than the, the population mean. This is could be a sample error or maybe it's really telling us something. So the question is, is the sampling error reasonable or do we need to shut down the filling operations and adjust the machine and manufacturers do this all the time. Let's do some calculations. There's also a hand-drawn version over here also. Alright, so we have mu equals to 14 ounces, standard deviation of the population, our sample x bar and our 30. Let's calculate our standard error. Sigma divided by square root of our 30, sample size n. Okay, so we have standard error of 0 0.07. You know, you can already kind of see, right? 14.14, 0 0.14, that's double the, the standard error. Standard error is the standard deviation, so that means this x bar that we calculated is two standard v deviations above the mean. Well, let's go ahead and do our calculations. I'm going to do x and z because, as we saw last chapter, you can either there's two different functions you can use, either based off of uh, x bar in our case or z. So our we already have our upper. That's this 14.4, uh, 14.14. Uh, our z we calculate z the deviation. We take our particular x bar minus the mean. That gives us our deviations divided by our standard error. Now I don't think I showed you that formula. I have that formula over in the um, PDFs. But it's, it's the key is we don't use sigma standard deviation. We use, because we're dealing with this distribution of x bars, we have to use that standard error. So exactly like we did before except for use the standard error. All right, well, probability on the upper side. Well, remember these functions always calculate probability from the negative infinity all the way up to the x bar we throw in. So all we have to do is use norm dot dist our x bar, comma our mean, and our standard error, comma one. All right, so that's the probability on the low side, but. Um, using norm.dist, our 
using our z, we use our norm dot s dot dist. We just put in our z. It'll give us the same exact thing, comma 1. Now remember, the, the s dot dist functions, these are different in 2010 than earlier versions. All right, we get it both ways. Now that's the probability from here to here, but we want the probability on the upper side. But you can already see it's going to be very low. Insert. So this is um, probability that x bar could be greater than or equal to 14.14 ounces. And as we'll see, equals 1 minus either one of those. Very small. So our conclusion. All right, so our conclusion, the probability associated with x bar 14.14 ounces or larger is very small. It is unlikely that we could have taken a sample of 14.14 and had the sampling error occur by chance. It is reasonable to assume that the machine is filling boxes with too much cereal. All right, um, so we saw in this video three examples of how to use the sampling distribution of x bar to come up with some probability statement about our x bars. And a uh, couple more videos in this chapter. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the correction factor. All right, see you next video.